Hello everyone, welcome back to my studio. I'm Rhonda. Um, sorry that I haven't been putting out very many videos lately. It's been a really busy summer and kind of a crazy fall, but I'm hoping to get back to weekly videos here in the near future. So one of the things that I wanted to do was to start a series on one of my favorite topics, which is painting animals. As you can see, I've got some animals here that I've painted. These ones were for a class that I'm taking. Got a little cat over here. Um, I also, this earlier this spring and summer, I painted a couple of donkeys. And so what I'm gonna start doing is a little series on painting animals. And the first video set in the series is going to be on how to paint a donkey. Now, even if painting a donkey isn't really your goal, the process that I go through for it will be the same process that you would go through when you paint pretty much any animal. So it's the same process that I used for the fox, the same process that I used for the cow, you know, that sort of thing. Very, very similar processes. You, you uh, modify them for whichever, whatever look you're going for. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, this video will be divided into a couple of sessions because uh, it does take quite a lot longer time to paint um, an animal than it does typically for me to paint like a floral or something like that. So the first video is actually going to cover um, doing my background and then uh, basing in the um, undertones for the donkey. And uh, so I hope you enjoy that. We'll go down to my desk and I'll show you what I used. So what I've set out here for myself is the Hansa Yellow, Daria Light Yellow, Yellow Oxide, Naphthol Red Light. This is Burnt Umber and Raw Umber. I kind of like the umbers for when I'm painting horses and donkeys. Burnt Sienna, Pine Green, Thalo Green Blue. This one here is Thalo Blue, uh, Red Violet, and my White. Uh, the brushes that I'm planning on using are my three quarter inch Fusion flat. I like to use this here. It's my number six synthetic filbert brush. I like to use that for my highlights and for my small areas, I mean. I do also have out my half inch Fusion Flat. And I have a number 10 Fusion Flat, a number eight Fusion Flat. These are all my long handled ones. And a number four. And I have a variety of them just because I'm not 100% sure what exactly I want to use for the different areas yet. And then I also have out my uh, number zero script liner. And let's just find the other one. Yes. And my number one liner, short liner. These um, two are both synthetic brushes and I can use them for the really fine detail. And I'll have a link in the description to all of the products that I'm using today. I'm also planning to use my palette knife um, on this painting a little bit. I've been practicing working with the palette knife a little bit more. This is a uh, Reeves palette knife. I have a set of them. Um, this is just the regular sized one. I have a few other ones that I can play with as well, some smaller ones and larger ones, and I'll link to those in the description as well. So I have my sketch up here um, on the board. I just did a rough sketch um, the other day with kind of my idea. So I've got the donkey in the center and I've got the flowers just kind of sketched out over here. Um, I, that'll all get covered up in background before I paint anyway. So I'm going to start by putting my background on. Um, for this particular painting, I decided I was going to put uh, just a nice blue background so it kind of looks like the sky on here. So I've got my three quarter inch fusion flat that I'm going to use for that. And I'm going to start by mixing some phthalo blue and white. And I'll have it a little bit darker up at the top and going lighter as I get to the bottom um, in the typical gradient of the sky. So I'm actually going to start down at the bottom here with some color. And I'm going to go just a little bit over my line there. Um, I will go in and out with these lines as I paint. I have a reference photo that I'm, or several reference photos that I'm using. And I've got a little bit of a darker blue that I'm going to put up here. Just 
This is a 14 by 18 board. Uh, it's 1 8 inch thick. It's just MDF. And that's what I typically like to paint on. Now the particular donkey that I'm painting here is, uh, his name was Duke, and he was a wild burro that lived uh, around the town of Oatman, Arizona. And this past year, unfortunately, Duke was hit by a vehicle and passed away. Uh, so I'm painting this painting here as a little tribute, as well as, because I, I just, I love those donkeys. I follow them on Facebook, even though I live 24 hour drive away. Um, I'll put a link to some of the pages about the burrows in uh, the description. Um, but I also am a big fan of, there is a Oatman Burrow Rehab Sanctuary down there that started up in the last year or so. And so I decided that I was going to paint this picture of Duke and send it down to them uh, so that they could auction it off as a fundraiser for their sanctuary. As you know, we run our own pony and donkey sanctuary up here in Canada, so I love to take the opportunities to support other sanctuaries when I can, because I know how much work and stuff goes into them. And uh, because all of my money goes towards our sanctuary, I thought, you know, why not use the other talents I have to help support others? Okay, so that's kind of my basic background. So I do want to just take a little bit more of the light color and just put it down here. Just because I'm going to be putting the flowers on here, so I'm not going to want to redo this area much after I get my flowers on. On this painting, I've decided that my light is going to come from this direction. I kind of like doing that because I like having, um, I like to be able to put a bunch of shadows on this side to make his face come forward. Okay, so now I'm going to let those flowers just tack up a little bit. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to actually go in and I'm going to base in my grays on the donkey. Now, when I do my basing in, I like to try and use a big brush. Uh, it's something that I've been learning in the classes that I'm taking. Uh, it was something that John Singer Sargent, who was a very famous portrait painter, well, he painted other things as well, but he was known really well for his portraits and stuff. But he always said, um, to use the largest brush possible uh, for an economy of strokes because the more strokes you take the more power you take away from your strokes So I'm going to use my half inch fusion flat for basing in my grays Now there's a few different ways that you can make grays um, I'm going to do a video on this eventually 
Um, I typically do not use black um, in a painting. I mix my own blacks and grays. Um, the only way that I, the only time that I typically will use black is if I'm actually doing like a black and white monochromatic painting. But even then I'll mix in uh, warms and cools to change the shade of the, um, of the gray. So one of the ways that is nice to mix a gray is actually to take blue, let me take some of my phthalo blue, and then a little bit of red. Now you'll get grays if you're going um, when you go opposites on the color wheel. So I'm going to take in some phthalo blue and I'm going to take in a little bit of red and some yellow. Now if it gets too brown, I'll add just more blue into it. So this is going to kind of make a nice dark brownish gray. And I'm going to actually add a little bit of violet to that because I'm going to be using this one for the shadows. So now for this, I'm just basing in my colors. So here I'm taking the shadow color and I'm just going to base in where I want to have shadows. And because my sun, my light is coming from this direction i want to have quite a bit of shadow on this side of his face so usually that's the steps that i follow when i'm painting a, a horse or a donkey or anything like that is i'll start out with just basing in my shadow colors um or my my gray colors and um on the on the animal and then so this is just going to be blocking in big sections of color it's uh, not anything like what the final drawing is going to look like so now here along this side of his face he'll have shadow there um, he'll have shadow down on his nose I want to have some shadow in around this ear. This is his bent ear. If anybody who follows the donkeys knows that Duke had a bent ear. He was a wild jack, so that involved a lot of battling with other jacks. I'm going to put a little bit in here because this area would be in shadow from this ear. And this side of the ear is going to be in a bit of shadow. And remember, all of this is going to change as I paint, because there's so many layers that go into a painting like this. The inside of this ear is going to be in shadow. Let's put some in there. Now, areas that I want a little bit of lighter shadow, but still that bit of Still that same color, I'm going to come out and, and add a little bit more white to it. Because as I get further away from his head, this area is going to be lighter. Because the sun will be hitting it. Everything's really nice and wet right now, um, because I did add some extender to it as well. I'm going to cover over where his cross goes there, because I'll put that in later. This area here is going to be in shadow, but it'll probably be a little bit lighter than the shadow right there because it's a deeper shadow. I just basically like to kind of get everything covered. With some paint. Now he is going to have a bit of shadow here. I'm going to start by just putting in this kind of cooler shadow, but because this is the sun side, I am going to make another gray for that after. So he's got his little dip above his ear there, or above his eye, I mean. Now, donkeys have 
exceptionally heavy brows. This is going to be a little hard to see because my background is gray, but donkeys do have very heavy brows. And that is a function of them being a desert animal um, because that helps protect their eyes from the sun. If you want to know a lot more about donkeys, you should follow our uh, donkey sanctuary, Happy Little Who's. Uh, I post a lot of information about donkeys and ponies and everything on there. That is my other passion. And just slowly watch them start to take shape. Now I am going to go in and I'm going to figure out where I want to put the light areas around his nose. So for that, because donkeys, uh, most donkeys, unless it's a no light points donkey, have a whitish area around their nose and around their eyes. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to make a little bit more of a kind of a yellow gray or a warmer gray. So I'm going to take some yellow. I kind of want it to be almost like a tan color. I'm going to take some yellow oxide and some burnt sienna. And some white. See where that gets me. It's a little too red. So in order to get it more of a tan, the opposite of red is green. So I'm going to go in with a little bit of my pine green. Just take that back away from being so red. Just get a nice color for the shadows here. And again, like I say, all of this is going to kind of change. But you've got to get it in there first to kind of see where you want to go with it. Now, most donkeys as well have a little bit of um, dark on their nose, which is why I put the gray down here. And Duke in particular has his white points go quite far up his nose. Let me just do that. I'm going to add a little bit more white to that, make it a lighter tan color, and put that in on the this side of his nose. When I'm basing in my colors, I like to be quite um, bold about where the uh, light is and where the shadow is because that's going to help me as I get further into the painting. That's going to help me to um, to make sure that uh, to make sure that I'm not losing my light source at all. Let me put some around this eye. And I'm going to go back to my darker one and put some around this eye with the darker one. And don't get too caught up in worrying about the amount you're putting on and all that kind of stuff because you'll be putting multiple layers on a picture like this. So you can cover over a lot of it. Now, another good way to make a gray is to take green and red because they're opposite sides of the color wheel. So that's what I'm going to do now. If you put too much red in, you just got to add more green back into it. This tends to make a bit more of a brownish gray. But it's a very interesting gray. And because the Napfall Red Light that I'm using is a warmer color, that makes this into a quite a bit warmer gray. But I'm going to use that nice warmer gray to base in some of these colors on his nose. And yes, it does look quite green right now, but again, like I say, that'll get covered over. And if you really don't like that, you can always just add a little bit more red to it. I 
just added some more white with a lighter color for this side of the face. Now, one thing about donkeys when you're painting them that you have to keep in mind is they have a very strong um, bone in their nose. So you're going to want to have quite defined nose there um, compared to how you might do even on a horse or something like that because a donkey has very, very strongly defined, uh, very, very strongly defined nose bone. They also have this very strong brow, uh, like I mentioned before, so you want to keep that looking strong. You don't want to uh, take too much away from that. Now I'm going to use some of this lighter gray over in here uh, for now. I'll probably end up making that more of a cooler gray just because it is out of the light. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of red violet to this and just see how that looks. See, the minute you add red violet, that really cools it off. I'm going to keep it a little lighter up at the top here just because that's the area that the sun is actually hitting. If you're finding that your color is going too green, you just add some red. If you're finding it's going too red, you just add some green. That's the nice thing about compliments. One other way that you can make your gray a little bit more on the cool side um, in this case is instead of adding pine green, if you added, um, instead of pine green, if you added in the phthalo green blue because it's a cooler green. See how much I have his brow protruding on this side? That's really a feature of donkeys. Now, that is kind of a nice basing in for him. The next thing I want to do, just quickly before I go back to the flowers, is I'm going to actually do his eyes. Now, I like to do the eyes fairly soon into the painting because for me, with uh, animals, um, and people for that matter, um, the eyes are really, really are the windows into them. And if you can get the eyes correct, you can get everything. Um, it, it really sets the tone for your painting, getting the eyes correct. So typically when I paint my eyes, for the beginning part of it, I like to use my number six um, synthetic uh, filbert because I can use the corners of it to get into areas. Now I'm going to start out with making them quite dark uh, by using my raw umber. One other thing that you'll notice about donkeys 
They have very large eyes typically and they have dark around them that almost looks like mascara. So that's what's kind of coming down here. Uh, in this case, um, just the angle that he's at, his brow is kind of covering the eyes a little bit, which is why I don't have them open super wide. But by capturing the eyes, you really capture the heart of the animal. I'm going to go into some burnt umber. Make his eyes a little more on the brown side. Especially on the outer edges and in this one on this edge. Now I'm going to go back and do some more to that later, but uh, there's one other thing that I just want to get in there just to, um, just so that I can see it, is I'm going to take a little bit of this really light tan color that I had. And I'm going to put a little bit of his catch lights in. So if the light's coming from this side, he's going to have catch lights on this eye. And I'm actually going to put a little bit just out on the edge of this eye as well, but not nearly as much. To me, that just really kind of brings out um, that really kind of brings out their eyes so you can really kind of see them a bit better. Yeah, so I'm going to start with that for, uh, for basing in his colors and putting his eyes on. If you enjoyed this session, please stay tuned. I will be uploading the next session shortly where I will go on to putting in a lot of the detail on the donkey. So I hope you enjoy it. And if you did, please like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you on the next video.